So after talking about instrument main details, let's move to the next components, which represent the processing of a signal received from the instrument. Let's start with control. As the PFD shows the basic control loop, the PNID shows more details. So if this is a control loop of a pump discharge in the PFD, in the PNID, we would need to show more details. So as we said, instruments send their readings to the downstream system. This system can be either the basic process control system, which is BPCS, or it can be the safety instrumented system, which is SIS, or in other words, ESD for emergency shutdown. We have given some details about instruments, which are the first component of the control loop. Now, let's talk about the control system itself. This is commonly known as distributed control system, or in other words, DCS. So, in addition to the instrumentation device, which is the flow element here, it sends the reading in a signal to the flow controller itself. The controller can use the direct flow reading, or it can process this reading based on a custom calculation. Maybe it shall be added to another flow so that we can combine the flow of more than one stream or whatever the function we need. But at the end, the system should process the signal and it shall send an output as an electric signal to the control valve actuator, which is the final control element. We shall talk about control valves in later videos, but here we are concerned more with the control system and the signal it receives and the output signal that is sent. The signal type from the instrument to the control system differs depending on being through a hard wire or through a serial link. In the DCS, most commonly, this will be a serial link, which is a software output. The square around the controller indicates that the reading is shown to the operator in the control room. So, as we can show the reading to the operator, we can also add an alarm, which is represented here by the letter L. So, in a nutshell, the DCS is a very advanced and robust computer system. Its cabinets are located in the control room. It receives the signals from the instruments, and based on the reading it received, it can process the signal and give an output signal to the final control element, which can be the valve and the motor, and hence we can adjust the process and achieve the control function we need. In addition to the control logic, the PNID also shows the shutdown logic. Usually, shutdown logic is being executed by a shutdown system, which is separate from the DCS. Usually, it's called ESD system, which stands for emergency shutdown, or it can also be called SIS system, which is safety instrumented system. The shutdown system should have higher reliability than the DCS. As we are talking here about safety and protection of personnel and equipment, not just normal operation. So here, if we want to protect the pump from cavitation, a signal from the level instrument is sent through a hard wire to the shutdown system. The shutdown system shall stop the pump. Still, we can send an indication to the operator in the DCS along with a low level or a low low level alarm. Here, the type of signal is different. It's not a serial link as we need more reliable signal. That's why hardwire signal is used. Let's see another example. If we are having two systems, a system with a piping of flange rating of 300 connected to a system with a flange rating of 150. As we said before, 300 rating flange piping is made to withstand a higher pressure than 150 rating piping. We added a class break, but what if this valve was closed by mistake? This can cause overpressure in the 150 rating system, which may lead to failure. So here we need to protect the 150 rating piping from overpressure. So we added a pressure transmitter and a shutdown valve. Here also we can use logic to stop the flow to the line in case of high pressure. So here the pressure transmitter shall send a signal through hardwire to the shutdown system and 
through interlock logic, if the reading of the pressure reach the shutdown pressure, which is the high, high pressure here, a signal shall be sent to close the shutdown valve. And now the low pressure system won't be subject to overpressure as the shutdown valve is now closed and there is no flow from the high pressure system to the low pressure system.